Welcome back, science fans. Today, we're considering the unthinkable scenario where tensions on the Korean peninsula escalate into a surprise nuclear attack by the North. Would South Korea's advanced technologies protect it from a nuclear bombardment? Recently, North Korea has been escalating its threats against the US and South Korea. It also sent shockwaves across the globe by demolishing the Arch of Reunification. This wasn't just any monument, it represented hope for a peaceful future between North and South Korea. By destroying it, the North clearly signals that reconciliation is off the table. They have also been ramping up their military displays, testing missiles, and flexing their nuclear capabilities. South Korea, on the other hand, isn't just watching from the sidelines. They're responding with their own shows of strength. The peninsula is like a boiling pot of water right now, but what if that pot boils over? Although North Korea's conventional military might lag behind the South's technologically advanced forces, their nuclear arsenal introduces a dangerous wildcard into the equation. So what if they decide to go all in and launch a surprise nuclear attack? Could they successfully hit a city despite the South's advanced missile defenses? From Gyeongju's historic alleys to Ulsan's busy streets, South Korea buzzes with life. In Seoul, the night sparkles, filled with people out and about. But this isn't just another evening. In recent weeks, tensions have escalated dramatically, with North Korea intensifying its military posturing. Suddenly, the relative calm is shattered by the blaring of sirens. The night sky begins to be marked by ominous trails of ballistic missiles. Panic quickly spreads across the country. Urgent alerts light up phone screens across South Korea, signaling the onset of a potential catastrophe. Amid the chaos, South Korea's missile defense systems spring into action. Korea's air and missile defense systems prepare to intercept the incoming threat. People watch as the night sky begins glowing with the streaks of interceptors racing to meet their targets. But despite all the advanced technology and existence of powerful missile defenses, like the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense and the Patriot Systems, it's unlikely they can stop a full-blown missile attack. Here's why some of North Korea's nukes get through the shield. North Korea will launch not one, but dozens or even hundreds of missiles simultaneously towards South Korea. This is a calculated effort to overwhelm the country's missile defenses. No matter how advanced missile defenses are, they only have a limited number of interceptors at any given time. Each interceptor is given a specific job, which is to target and destroy an incoming missile. But in a saturation attack, the sheer volume of objects can exceed the system's capacity. Also, proper missile defense involves understanding which incoming missiles to target and which should be left alone. With a limited stock of interceptors and only a short window to respond, defense systems have to figure out which missiles are headed to valuable targets. This means that not all rockets are engaged and some should be ignored because they're headed to unimportant areas. Human operators and automated systems must quickly consider all this information before wasting interceptors. A saturation attack makes these decisions exponentially more difficult because radar and sensor networks tracking incoming missiles become overloaded. North Korea knows that the South has very advanced defense systems, so they've adapted by developing numerous countermeasures. One of the ways is by designing weapons that deploy decoys beside the actual warheads. Decoys mimic the missile's flight profile and radar signature, making them hard to differentiate between the real bombs and the fake ones. This tactic divides the attention of the defense system and increases the chances of the genuine warhead reaching its target. Another countermeasure involves electronic warfare. By jamming radar and communication frequencies, North Korea could confuse defenses. Jamming creates a blanket of radio interference that disrupts the eyes of the computers. The radar then begins to see false echoes and loses track of the true missile. North Korea has also designed hypersonic missiles with maneuverable re-entry vehicles. These are designed to travel much faster than traditional missiles and can change their trajectory during flight, especially during the terminal phase, making interception much more difficult. Maneuverability allows these missiles to evade defense systems that rely on predicting the missile's path to intercept it. It's like playing a game of cat and mouse, where the mouse suddenly learns to zigzag, which reduces the chance of the cat catching it. Finally, like any complex system, missile defenses are not immune to technical malfunctions. 
Interceptor missiles might fail to launch, guidance systems could malfunction, or there could be errors in threat assessment. And we have to revisit the complexity of decoys, saturation attacks, and incorrect threat assessments. All of these can lead to wasting interceptors on non-threatening targets or letting one go that has a nuclear warhead. In the end, you can see that even though missile defenses may put up a valiant fight, intercepting thousands of warheads at once is extremely difficult. A few will get through. The impact zones could vary, but population centers will be the primary targets. The aftermath would be catastrophic with the loss of countless lives and irradiated cities dotting the landscape but it doesn't end there. The impact on technology will hit closer to home than you can imagine. We will face a world the next iPhones will be delayed, a world where the latest electric cars or the simplest electronic devices grinds to a halt. This is because South Korea is a linchpin in the global tech supply chain. If it's devastated by nuclear conflict, the world will be changed. Click on my next video to find out how. Until the next time,